Today our goal is to identify both a dependent and independent variable. We'll also be graphing ordered pairs representing those variables on a coordinate plane. Before we can look at dependent and independent variables in a situation, you should be thinking about what do those words mean in your life? What does it mean to be independent? What does it mean to be dependent? Maybe you thought about your parents and said that your parents are independent. They're self-sufficient. They do things on their own. I often think about adults as being independent. And what would it mean to be dependent? Well, someone who's dependent would rely on others. Children are dependent. Children depend on adults for rides, places, food, clothing, shelter. So children are dependent on the adults who are independent. Well, now that we've thought about that connection, let's look at how this can relate to our math. In this example, it says a meerkat's height changes throughout the first 20 months of life. How tall is the meerkat after a certain number of months? Well, there are two variables in this situation, two things that can change. The height changes and the months of life change. So which is an independent variable and which is dependent? The dependent variable depends on the independent variable. The independent variable changes on its own. Another way to think about this is to think what must occur for the other two occur. Well, I know that months must pass in order for the meerkat to grow or change height. So the independent variable will be the months. As the months change, the height changes, it increases. So I know that the dependent variable will be the meerkat's height. You've learned that we can represent variables using different letters. Typically, you'll see your independent variable be called x and your dependent variable be called y. But of course, we could use any letter to represent variables. Using x and y are going to help us when we try to graph today. Now, I'm going to change this problem a little bit. I'm going to tell you that the height of the meerkat is equal to three times its age in months. times age in months, and the months are represented with x, we can make a rule for this as height is equal to 3x. You'll notice on your paper that I have function tables drawn in two different ways. We've called these function tables, we've called them input-output tables. They can be held horizontally or vertically. So I'm going to start by putting my two variables into the table. Both of these function tables will have the exact same data, they just look a little different and we want to be familiar with both of them. So let's fill in some values for x. I'm going to use one month of life, three months, and five months for our meerkat. Let's determine what the height will be after these amounts of time. Well, if one month has passed and my rule is three times the number of months will give us the height, then three times one is three. When there are three months have passed, three times our rule three will give us nine is our height. When five months have passed, five times our rule three x gives us 15. And if you needed to pause to show some substitution, that would be a great idea right down below. Let's fill that same data into our vertical 
function table. Now that we have these function tables, we can graph this information in order to look at it on a coordinate plane. Before we do that, let's take a look at a coordinate plane and familiarize ourselves a little bit. Here I have a coordinate plane for you. And it says that we're going to graph the function in quadrant one of a coordinate plane. Before we do that, let's talk about some parts. In a coordinate plane, I have two axes. I have both an x-axis, which is horizontal, meaning it's going left to right, like the horizon, and I have a y-axis, which is vertical. I remember that the y-axis is vertical, just like the long part of the y hangs and makes a vertical line. The center right here, where my two axes meet, is called the origin. And then I have different values on my axes. Please notice that the one is talking about this point right here, two, Three, each of these numbers represent where this line for their grid is, is coming through our graph. Today, we are working with quadrant one. This is quadrant one of our coordinate plane. There are three quadrants in all, quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. Again, today, we're going to be working with quadrant one, where all of our x values are positive and all of our y values are positive. I'm going to cover that up so that I have access to my points here. Mixed up a little bit. There we go. Now, in order to plot these points, I'm going to need to write them as an ordered pair. If you think back to some math that you've learned in the past, you might remember that an ordered pair has two values, an x value and a y value. Well, that's why we called our independent variable our x value and our dependent variable, our y value. When we plot points, we're going to plot them as x comma y. The x value tells us how far to move to the left or right. The y value is going to tell us how far to move up or down. You might have learned that first you learn to crawl before you learn to walk, or maybe that an airplane taxis before it takes off. These are some hints to help you remember to first move horizontally before you plot your point vertically. So looking at our function table, I see that I have an x value of 1 and a y value of 3. I write that ordered pair inside of a set of parentheses with a comma between the two values. Now I want to plot that point. Let's take a look at our quadrant 1. Again, my x axis is right here, horizontally, and my y axis is vertical. And I always start by plotting points right here at the origin. My first point is 1, 3. I'm going to move over 1 and then up 3. 1, 2, 3. And we're going to draw a point. And then I'm going to label the point in an ordered pair. Let's graph the next point. X value is 3. The Y value is 9. And again, we're going to plot this point, 3, comma, 9. So I'm going to move over 3, 1, 2, 3, and up 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Notice when I'm plotting that point that it's lining up with the 9. It can be helpful to draw these little loops as you count to make sure you're in the right place. And of course, I'm going to label that point with its coordinate 3, comma, 9. Our last ordered pair is 5, comma, 15. If you'd like to pause the video, you can plot that one on your own. I'm going to move over 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then up 15. And of course, label your ordered pair. Now I've plotted the way that my height, my height of the meerkat is changing 
over the time in months. I can see that in one month, the meerkat is three inches tall. In five months, it is 15 inches tall. I can see this by reading the graph. The next thing that I want to do is take a ruler, and I'm going to connect those points. It's important to use a ruler. We want to be as neat as possible. So let's line up these points. I'm holding it down with both fingers. And I'm going to put arrows at both ends. Because I was able to connect the points and make a straight line, that tells me that this is a linear relationship. Linear meaning it makes a straight line. I drew this straight line because this allows me to make some predictions about the meerkat's height. For example, right here, I can see that my line crossed through the point one, two, three, four, comma, twelve. That allows me to make the prediction that in four months of life, the meerkat will be 12 inches tall. By extending this line, I can find a lot more values and a lot of heights for this meerkat at different ages without, without doing all of that math and substitution. Again, today we learned to identify independent and independent variables. We completed a function table and graphed the ordered pairs on a coordinate plane.